I'd like to say how much I enjoyed the poetry I've heard tonight. I leave it to the rest of you in your own opinions, but <laughs> gee whiz, it was, uh, that's nice stuff tonight. Uh, one of the advantages of living overseas for extended periods is that you get to customize yourself to the customs of that other nation. And uh, I spent five years in Japan, and a good portion of the things that I write, the roots are uh, with that experience. And they come out in many ways. Uh, not in any deliberate fashion, but surprisingly, most of the time. So I, I'm going to read this one tonight. The Boy Who Wrote Poetry. There was a boy, a very strange, enchanted boy. They say he wandered very far, very far over land and sea. It's 1925. You're 49 days old and cradled by Grandma in her sickbed. She suffers VD-induced sciatic neuralgia. Thanks to Grandpa, ex-governor, ruined businessman, and philanderer. She demands that you be left in her little room until age 12. You tend to her dressings, her whims. She reads classics to you. Peeking out through a peephole, you fancy a wor world overheard. Fill in the blanks with imagined stories and fine poems. Age 12, your eyes linger on Guido Reni's Saint Sebastian. Its pure naked hues, its arrow flesh punctures ejaculation. Your father decries poetry as girlish tears up your poems. At 16, you suffer your rugby club's disdain for literates who write classical waka and haiku, read Rilke and Wilde. You camouflage your talent, hide behind a fanciful pen name, Yukio, poetic for snow, Mishima, a small town by Mount Fuji. In Confessions of a Mask, you write how to dissect myself alive. You write of all things, modern no plays and kabuki plays. Create shock, the sticky meeting of glances at gay bars. Become Japan's most translated fiction author. Nobel rumors. Alone, you prize your weightlifter pectorals, your deep pond eyes under a kamikaze headband. That Life magazine portrait, not enough. You imagine a live murder theater. Script your patriotism film. 1,500 words to describe Harakiri, not enough. You will restore the pure samurai ethos. Create your own force, kendo trained. 80 country lads, blood bonded under oath. You will revive the pure Japan. The emperor divine again audacious. With four hand-picked aides, you betray a general, tie him to his chair, demand, demand he muster his Tokyo garrison. Eight hundred soldiers in the parade square. You berate them, exhort them to divine service. They scream in answer, madman, Stop playing the hero, asshole. Oh, the sting, that fall from grace, that loss of face, every dream ends. 
Imagine your sulking return to the enraged general, still gagged and roped to his chair. Your ritual scream, Banzai! 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 As you two hand plunge the dagger, rip it left to right across your torso. The sun rose, glowing red, behind his eyelids. Your top aide's duty, his sword flashing, katana once, katana twice, each a failed coup de grace. Your shoulder gashed, your neck still proffered, to your second aide's death slashed, the head drops. Now the second aide's bloody katana raised over the dishonored aide's first neck bowed. The second head drops. What does it take to imagine a murder theater? To visualize a mother washing her son's body, headless, washing his head, bodiless. Somewhere in a dark bedroom, a lost spirit hovers, kabuki eye to keyhole, no mask ear to wall, breath glowing red and leeching murky dreams behind the eyelids. And then one day, a magic day, he came my way, and while we spoke of many things, fools and kings, this he said to me, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Thank you.